All right, so we are recording, so take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming to my uh, talk. So the topic is slightly different from the uh, what I put in the introductory page. So it's more about a multimodal approach to enhancing EFL students' meaning making. And then, okay, so what is multimodality? Uh, it refers to the multiplicity and interconnection of different modes uh, for communication by the New London Group. So when it comes to multimodality, we often uh, take textual and visual modes. For example, we often actually people refer them both modes as being uh, more comprehensive in terms of um, helping students to comprehend or um, to write. And they are of distinct affordances as well. And they uh, offer different entry points instead of uh, like textual mode, which mostly allows sequential manners um, in reading. And they also encourages um, deeper engagement um, when it comes to learning. And, um, and visual modes on the other hand, uh, are often used as supplementary or even subordinate to textual mode. So in my study, I really like to see how they um, contribute equally to they complement each other to help students to make meanings. And of course, um, we can see that uh, individuals, they have very different learning styles. So the more different modes may allow them to kind of tap into their learning potential. So the gap in research uh, answers uh, in 2014 mentioned that uh, there's a need to reconceptualize reading instruction um, based on language and image uh, complementarity and studies in this regard um, still fall short, which uh, is still true today. And um, past studies exploring multimodal writing, they are mostly small in scale. Um, most of them are case studies. Um, they simply describe uh, how learners work with um, different modes without really um, delving into their performance and even instruction. So basically instruction is not the focus. So they generally recommend uh, an explicit approach to multimodal language learning. So it has great potential to scaffold language uh, learning and um, basically involves an introduction of a set of meta language to allow learners to name and verbalize their thinking. So uh, in my study, I focus on the ideational meaning um, in the, for the experimental group. And um, so it involves a set of relevant meta language to raise EFL learners awareness. And there's a uh, control group, which um, I use more of an implicit approach. Uh, they are offer uh, similar sets of uh, visuals um, resources, but um, without the metalinguistic labels. So, I'm going to talk about what it means by ideational meaning. So basically the study is based on systemic functional linguistics. So in systemic functional linguistics, um, linguistic resource is realized through three meta functions, ideational, interpersonal, and textual. So in terms of ideational meaning, it actually represents experience and reality in language. So textually, um, we look for participants or the nominal groups and processes or the verbal groups. And um, to connect meanings across mode, um, I look for their sense relations by Royce, which, uh, which is inspired by Holiday and Hassan to link meanings across mode. So basically there are six types uh, by repetition, by synonym, by antonym, across mode, and hyponymy, a kind of, morality, a part of, and collocation, things that naturally co-occur. So my research question, so I'd like to see after the intervention, how do the two groups vary in their intersemiotic 
ideational meaning making. So how the types of participant process differ between groups and within groups from pre to post intervention performance. And how do they vary in the extent of how they connect uh, the two modes via sense relations. And what are the qualities of the written responses? So uh, the participants are two classes of EFL students, and then they come to take the ESP class in education. And they are of different, they come from different disciplines and they are of mixed proficiency level. So basically the number is quite similar, 33 versus 34. So instruction. So um, the control group, they use they they are offer provided with visual and test, and they simply interpret intuitively. Okay. The experimental group, they also provide they are also provided the same set of visual and text, and uh, introduce a set of meta language. So. Um, their participant process and under process. There are four subtypes: doing, being, sensing, feeling, and uh, saying. For sense relations to get to link meanings, um, there is that repetition, synonym, antonym, meronymy, which I mentioned before. So I think it's easier to um, comprehend the framework by visuals. So um, we have ideational meaning at the top and under participant, the nominal groups and process, and under process, there are four types. So to link meanings across mode um, between text and visuals, um, uh, they are taught to uh, recognize the, whether it's repetition, synonym, antonym, um, meronymy, hyponymy, and collocation, okay? Okay, so here's an example. So this is one of the slides I showed in the class. So um, let's identify the participant in test and the visual. So uh, there are different um, five colors which represent five different participants in both the visuals and the text. And this one that's identified processes in the image. So you can see that there are people standing there watching, raised, raising their hands and jumping. So they identify these and then stand um, is doing and watch is sensing and raising hand jump doing as well. So this is kind of the exercise I had them do during class. And uh, when it comes to connecting meanings across mode, so we see an image and then the accompanying text. So you see a guy, um, which is the participant in the e-visual, and uh, he is actually running uphill as the process, okay? So in the task, we see perseverance is often kind of co-occur with running uphill, okay? It takes pers uh, perseverance and having stamina as well, uh, naturally co-occur with running uphill. And in addition, a marathon and sprint, they are, I believe, uh, a type of running, okay? So you can see that how the task and image uh, can connect. Okay, so basically uh, how I teach the class uh, involves a cycle of deconstruction of the meta language, joint construction, independent construction as well. So there are multiple tasks for joint construction, uh, including midterm project and short reports, etc. And um, here's one activity I had them do during class. So um, they got into groups and they were assigned different um, images. So uh, basically, I want them to identify what are the participants and processes and why. Um, have you ever been like one of them? And how did you feel? So they kind of co-constructed meanings together. Um, so some more examples of their artifacts. So they drew a lot during the class. Um, related to education. And um, I found it very, very engaging when it comes to uh, drawing because this is actually not an exception, but kind of a common um, phenomenon that I observe when they work with um, uh, visuals and drawing. 
So very interesting uh, visual. Some are quite talented in drawing. And this is, um, I asked them to identify the process in the test. So again, they were all upstanding and looking and discussing. And an example came to um, the front and then discuss what's the image about. And again, like this, they are very, very engaged. And this is one of the drawings showing something related to learning styles, I guess. And then different groups, um, they all use a little whiteboard to draw. And this is another example of an artifact. Um, this is actually created the, 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 uh, by a group of students. So simply I passed them uh, uh, playing a test. So they added uh, and design, okay, the layout and everything, added images, okay. They found online, so we can see that there's connection because it's about social media. So they found this image to uh, to, um, to accompany um, the text, and um, there's like um, imply adult adolescence. And in here. Again, because the test mentioned five social media platforms, so they, they, they got this image. And then at the end, the test mentioned that um, uh, kids might suffer from emotional and mental, may suffer uh, emotional and mental health. And so this is the image they found. Okay, so uh, data collection and analysis. So there is pre-intervention reading comprehension. And then the major data uh, is this pre and post written responses to visual prompts. So I gave them uh, five visual prompts and they, write, they wrote um, uh, what they think about uh, those images. They are of similar uh, difficulty and um, because the, I think the task, the, re, uh, the writing task uh, was validated by this theory and then they show sufficient reliability in eliciting students, participant, and process types and tokens for classroom uh, assessment and uh, other data. The other data include artifacts and then field notes. So analysis, I uh, identify participant and process in their test and visuals in the test. And then I calculated the mean, medium, mode, range, and then I also identify uh, the types used twice, okay, by students and above, not just once. Um, the reason why is that I feel like it's probably more disciplined if I only consider types used by a whole class uh, twice and above. Okay, so also test analysis was performed. So here's what we see. Okay, so generally in the pre-intervention um, writing, the experimental group um, has some higher mean of uh, both participant and process types, but um, in the post-intervention uh, responses, they had um, fewer types um, compared to the control group, which I think is a good sign because there's so much, this is only so much message encoded in the visual. So there's no way for them to go on and on uh, uh, randomly talking about things unrelated. And again, in the range, so um, um, the control group tend to have a wider ranging um, participant and process, okay, from pre to post. So as you can see here, for the experimental group, their participants types in pre and post, the range, um, I think are quite the same. Um, but for the um, control group, both for their process types and participant types, the ranges are pretty wide. So I think um, in a way I feel like they, because they did not receive this training, they lack the meta language uh, to help them name what seeing the images. So they kind of probably lost control a little bit. 
Okay, so uh, I also compare intergroup post intervention sense relation patterns. So, so how they connect uh, meanings across mode. So you can see in the middle, the overlap showing that this is the common ground. Okay, so they all use the same uh, participant and process in the overlapping, okay. Uh, column. So the experimental group they use, uh, there's a unique types they use, okay, uh, versus the uh, implicit uh, control group, okay. So basically, we see that um, there is a um, um, higher sense relation percentage, both um, participant types and process type combined um, for the experimental groups. So that means they tend to um, link, um, show higher percentage of um, um, complementarity, okay, when, the, when, when it comes to interpreting um, um, uh, the visuals and then write it down in their uh, written response. Um, so uh, I'll skip the uh, process, okay. And also the experimental group also use more repetition, which again, I think is a good sign because um, um, they, they have to base their interpretation on facts to start with, okay. And there's a sharp contrast between the use of a type of relationship and part and whole relationship uh, between the experimental group and the control group. So I'll give a few examples here. So the experimental group, let me check the time, okay. Um, they use more a uh, type of relationship, okay. So they use activity, so what you see this is one of the prompt. So you see this is a kind of activities they are engaged in and they're one of the methods, okay, a type of method um, in learning, and then a type of lesson and a type of environment and the type of art they are creating. And uh, a control group, they use more of part and whole relationship when they um, see this image. So they use word, uh, world in their written response. Um, they, they, they mentioned childhood, uh, so learning is part of childhood, I believe, and the subject is part of learning. They use subject in their written response. Okay, so I also looked into their uh, within group, okay, from the uh, pre-intervention to post-intervention uh, written response. Um, so in the, for the experimental group, you can see that um, almost uh, they, they, they got more going on in their uh, post unique types. So that means they tend to, they, they generate more meanings uh, post intervention, except for um, repetition. But again, you can see that the, the, the gap is rather small because compared to the control group, which I'll show in the next slide, um, the, 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 the gap is huge, okay, between the overlap and post unique. And there's also a very salient gap in collocation um, in terms of overlapping and uh, post unique. So they use a lot more uh, collocation kind of sense relation um, um, post intervention. Uh, and then lastly, we see that there's a salient gap in the sense relation, which of course is a very good sign because um, almost double um, compared to the overlapping um, um, percentage. So basically more uh, new meanings being generated and are complemented. So for example, I want to show that um, the, sal uh, the salient gaps in collocation uh, for the uh, experimental group. So this is the, the uh, uh, participant types used in their pre-intervention test and um, the overlapping. So you can see in the post uh, uh, written response, you can see that there are a lot more meanings being generated and many of them belong to the uh, collocation sense relations. So you can see for take for example, ideas are uh, something naturally co-occur uh, when it comes to um, uh, using cell phone and then addiction, of course, um, when people use cell phone, they tend to get addicted. Okay, so this is the control group. Okay, so we can see that while there's a huge gap, almost double um, in the post uh, unique response 
um, sense relation um, for the uh, experimental group. Um, there's um, probably very close, okay? So uh, post unique uh, types versus overlapping types and uh, a huge gap. So you can see that uh, the participant um, in a repetition, in a uh, sense relationship of um, repetition, uh, you can see that um, um, more um, participant uh, are used uh, the same. I mean, between a pre and post written um, response. Um, again, salient gap. Um, five minutes left. Five minutes, okay. <laughs> so salient gap in collocation for the uh, control group as well. So uh, oh, we can see that um, I think I've mentioned most of these. Okay, so uh, I'd like to sh show some examples. So I found that um, um, the, okay. So the experimental group tend to have grounded um, meanings versus ungrounded meanings. So this is one of the uh, students in the experimental group. So in the pre-test, they mentioned that uh, we shouldn't use the same way to teach different students. So those on the line showing that they have their visual complement. Okay, students, students are not product. And in the post-intervention drop, they have, um, um, uh, richer resources being used, a production, production line, a person actually check and oversee re really precise and production line school, a standard curriculum, uh, as opposed to what they are doing here. Okay, actually similar to what they're doing here and learning style as opposed to, which is, um, as you can see, we don't see different learning style being encouraged. So showing an antonym kind of sense relation. Whereas for the control group students, um, um, there's human, it's not a robot. So we can see some connection here. We see human robot being depicted, but in the post intervention draft, um, she just uh, kind of took off and talk about whatever, which is not really grounded in the image. So without images, they can we can all say something like this. So um, uh, I'll just conclude. Okay, so I think the ability to capture ideation meaning um, is very important because that's the first step to de de derive richer meanings. And the ability to read the images may better support learners to develop evidence and details in constructing more solid claims, which I found. And um, I also found that choir students had equal access to expressing themselves, which is very enc encouraging. So uh, I don't have too much time. I'll stop here. Um, three minutes. Uh, I like uh, welcome any questions you have. Uh, so let me stop. Okay, sharing. Okay. So any question? Uh, All right, everyone. If you have any questions, please unmute your mic and you can ask. Or you can ask in the chat if you're shy. What do I see the chat? Uh, so you can, uh, if you go up to the top, you can click the little bar and say yes. stop sharing. Okay, I have, I believe I've stopped. The very top of the screen, there should be a, uh, like a green bar. Oh, I see that. I, I got that, I got that. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, so any question? Any questions, just go ahead and unmute or you can ask in the chat. I was liking that you were talking about supporting all of the quiet students. I just wanted to comment on that because I have so many, just like right now we're asking for questions and nobody's asking questions. My, my classes are an awful lot like this all of the time. So, yeah, but if you just give them like a whiteboard and ask them to draw, right. they kind of instantly they are uh, up, up to what they are. Yeah, really excited to be able to express themselves through different means. Yeah, yes. all that alternative methods. It really exactly. Works. 
I enjoyed and, that. Thank you so much. <laughs> and it's just um, let's just say that it's actually very difficult to analyze this because it's um, uh, I can use the traditional way of evaluation like synth syntactical complexity, lexical diversity, because this does not really fit what I want to depict the uh, ideational meaning. So um, it, it was, this is one of the challenges when I want to like, apply this framework. Definitely. Yeah, so it's difficult to show that there's significant difference between the groups. Yes. Good. You so, did an amazing job explaining it all. <laughs> thank you so much no thank you thank you all right we've reached time though yeah thank you so, um if anyone has any more questions you can contact her later yes um, everybody whoever's here let's say thank you you can wait thank you, thank you. Bye, bye thank you enjoy the rest yeah. of the day thank you oh no thank you very much all right i'm gonna stop the recording now